Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. It's another episode of the Daily Crypto News, which is always myself, Bobby. Got my brother with me, Mr. Scott Tripp, a.k.a. the Crypto Beast. As you guys know by now, we like to take a couple minutes out of our day, go through some of the news uh, that we see online with some of the uh, crypto things going on and bring them to your attention and see what you guys think about it. Uh, as always, guys, make sure you click like, comment, or subscribe down below. Let us know how you're doing, what you think about some of the topics that we're picking. And um, before we get started, I'll let Scott tell you a little bit about himself, and then we'll go right into the news today. Yeah, for sure. Scott with Big One, as well as Asia Blockchain Community, happy to be here. Uh, excited to uh, get closer to the end of the week, and things seem a little bit more positive, so that's nice as well. So, yeah, let's keep it going. Yeah, the, the one good thing, whether um, it's, uh, you know, the market's up or down, there's always some news, right? And mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of the market. As long as there's news circulating, that means I think, you know, regardless of which direction we, we tend to go towards right now, it's still going to be a, a, a good, it's, it's good news regardless, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely, for sure. So to go right into my first article today, it's actually going to be coming from Cointelegraph. And the headline reads, IOTA selected for phase 2A of EU blockchain initiative. Excuse me. Uh, in, the, in the coming month, uh, IOTA plans to pilot product passports for digital waste recycling and the cross-border management uh, intellectual properties. So they decided that today, actually, um, that they were going to be doing that. Um, and it looks like they got a lot of things that they're going to be headlining. It would investigate the feasibility of sharding as to X potentially scale that IOTA network, uh, develop an approval weight content. Uh, consensus mechanism that will be highly flexible to allow both permissionless and permission use cases. They're also going to ensure IOTA-based solution for cross-border transfer uh, transfers um, by EBSI governance structures. They're also going to integrate the, the GDPR compliant identity solution with the new framework for EU digital identity on EBSI. And they're going to prepare for on and off chain bridges to other protocols in and outside the EBSI, including support uh, for Ethereum or the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine. So that sounds like it's going to be some um, some nice things going on in the next six months. Um, this, this is going to be pretty cool. Sounds like they got a lot of things that they're going to be doing. Uh, and they they raised the $100, $100 million in, uh, from cap, uh, private investors. So uh, it's going to be be something to keep the eye on for iota yeah for sure uh my first article i picked i'm just going to go right to it too is tonga to copy el salvador's bill making bitcoin legal tender said former mp in a ruling that is almost identical to the el salvador tongan bigwig lord i can't even pronounce his name but the lord anticipates his country <laughs> to adopt bitcoin by november another dominion is lined up to fall down the route to Bitcoin coinization. On Wednesday, a former lawmaker, the Pacific Island nation of Tonga, shared a play-by-play -play approach to adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. In a series of tweets, a former member of parliament for Tonga released an ETA for Bitcoin becoming legal tender in Tonga, copying El Salvador's playbook. The move could onboard more than 100,000 Tongans onto the Bitcoin network. In this five-point plan, the chairman of the Global Organization of Parliamentarians Against Corruption describes the adoption path. It just goes September, October, bill goes to Parliament, pass, sent to Palace Office for a submission to His Majesty for royal assent. A month, HM is advised by Privy Council, assent to bill, two to three weeks, gazettes by government activation date set. On activation date, Bitcoin becomes legal tender. So, and I think it's the right way of doing things. Another smaller nation putting in Bitcoin and seeing how it properly will run. So it's good to see. Oh, yeah. Always good good news when you see more uh, countries starting to adopt the Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, to jump into my next article, we're actually going to go right back to Cointelegraph. Um, the headline reads, Secure D app built on Solana reinvents cryptocurrency trading. So in the last year, more people than ever uh, before have taken the cryptocurrencies as a medium for investment. 
Um, so go on, it goes on to say here um, that they're pretty much going to improve the DEX experience, uh, the power of the blockchain. Let's see if we can find a good part of it. Um, all right, so basically this is what they're going to do to address the concerns. Uh, the the secretum looks to to features including a secure uh, anonymous signup process, which only relies on the user's cryptocurrency wallet address. And this anonymity contrasts greatly with the traditional process, which often relies heavily on the user verification through their name, email, or personal data. In addition to the anonymity, the interface itself is designed to be more intuitive with the P2. P2P interface that has been designed with the end user in mind, enabling the simple transaction between sending and receiving cryptocurrencies or NFTs. Uh, Secretum is also taking advantage of the smart public channel to enrich project uh, launch for, launches further and uh, to enable conversations with verifications for NFT collection holders, crypto traders, and investors. So it looks like they're going to have a, a, a pretty uh, unique wallet that uh, it's going to allow pretty much like uh, this DApp that they're going to be building is going to allow for people to trade NFTs uh, without having to do it on like an open sea <coughs> or on like a marketplace. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Like the same way we send our tokens to one another, you'll be able to send NFTs to one another. So pretty cool. That's awesome. And mine is on uh, Jack Dorsey. Again, showing up in the news. Uh, Jack Dorsey's payment company, Block, is building a system for Bitcoin miners. Uh, Jack Dorsey's payment startup, Block, formerly Square, is going to start mining for Bitcoin. In a string of tweets from Block's general manager for hardware, Thomas Templeton, laid out the company's plan for the next step. Templeton says the goal is to make Bitcoin mining the process of creating new Bitcoins by solving increasingly complex computational problems more distributed and in and efficient in every way from buying to set up to maintenance to mining. Uh, the, the idea of making the mining process more accessible has to do with more than just creating new Bitcoin, according to Templeton. Instead, he said the company sees it as a long-term need for a future that is fully decentralized and permissionless. Uh, and he basically said they're working on a new uh, ACES system as well. So the project is being incubated with Block's hardware team, which is beginning to build out a core engineering team of system ASIC and software design. Uh, the Block is looking to improve reliability and the user experience of mining. Uh, democratizing access to Bitcoin mining is a big part of the mission statement of this project. Mining isn't accessible to everyone, wrote Dorsey in October. Bitcoin mining should be as easy as plugging a rig into a power source. There isn't enough incentive today for individuals to overcome the complexity of running a miner for themselves, which is very true. You see it all the time that people are just scared to load up a computer and, and learn how to mine. But I mean, if you do your research, it's fairly straightforward if you're not building the computer yourself. But I mean, I get where they're coming from. This plug and play system is better. I don't know if you've seen today, but uh, somebody in was mining Bitcoin and his hash rate was like super, super low. But just by some fluke chance, they say it's like one in 160,000. He won the block for the, the Bitcoin. It was like, he ended up winning, I think it was like 2.47 Bitcoin or something, or no more than that, four, four, or I forget how many, wow. it was over a certain, a lot of money. Like the guy made a lot of money and it's the second time that it's happened in the last little while. So I'm wondering if there isn't something to do with that too, that these miners seem to be missing out and these small guys are moving in and, and grabbing a piece of the pie and I'm not a hundred percent for sure. I find that kind of intriguing as well. Yeah, man. I mean, if it was a, uh, if it was so simple, uh, I think a lot more people would do it. And I actually think mining is is really, um, if, if it's not taking up a lot of energy, I think it's it's a smart way. The proof of work. I mean, and 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 you know, the plug and play system. I think it's, it's going to be something in the future uh, where people you can really just plug your stuff in and just let it run. Um, and they do have it in other countries, but I know like here in the States, it's not, it's not as a common, you know, like most people who mine, they have mining, uh, like, uh, farms. 
But to jump into my last article um, for the day, going to go to Coin Telegraph again. The headline reads: Gemini acquires Bitra, Bitria, yeah, Bitria to push crypto into the wealth management industry. So, crypto exchange Gemini announced Thursday that it had agreed to purchase Bitria, a San Francisco-based startup that provides traditional portfolio management tools for use in crypto investments. The goal of Bitria is to provide a platform for traditional asset managers and financial advisors to use in helping their clients invest in cryptocurrencies. Um, so many of the financial advisors would only have access to one or two tokens through closed funded, uh, closed in, closed in funds and spot uh, crypto ETFs. So it looks like they're going to be, uh, you know, really trying to get themselves out there uh, with, with some of the top financial advisors and, and get into the wealth management uh, industry. Uh, kind of kind of good news for uh, Gemini. I haven't really heard much about Bitria, but I'll do a little bit more research onto it. But definitely some good news. Uh, and and it's it's kind of like uh, to me, um, you know, Coinbase uh, acquired Fairex, right? And that's like their uh, way of pretty much having a, a, a crypto or, or a financial advisor team on board. Uh, but it, uh, the only thing that I, I I don't like about these sometimes is just those those spot ETFs are, are just you know not my favorite. Yeah. I, I I kind of find this ironic in a way or whatever this article that I grabbed here, but I don't know what you think about it. But China aims to separate NFTs from crypto via new blockchain infrastructure. China is planning to draw a line, a clear line between cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens, pretty much the same day way it did with digital currency efforts before the crypto crackdown in the country harms the local NFT industry. Uh, Government-backed blockchain project in China is working on an infrastructure that would support business and individuals to build platforms and apps to manage NFTs. Officially called the BSN Distributed Digital Certificate, the project aims to support the deployment of non-crypto NFTs by offering application programming interfaces for the development of user portals and apps where fiat money would be the sole method of payment. Underscoring that NFTs have no legal trouble in China as long as they're not used with Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Well, right now every NFT is run by other cryptocurrencies or so confused. Bitcoin. <laughs> I was just like, yo, so how is that going to work uh, when, when mostly everything's it controlled? Defeats, so, it defeats the purpose of an NFT. If they're saying it's not tied to anything but fiat currency, how is somebody from Canada or the U.S. going to come in and buy that NFT, right? Like, there's no, there's no way. way to do it. They're, I think they're trying really hard, but in the same sense, I don't, I think they're, what, they're trying to do isn't plausible like they're going to continue to try and stop things and do things but in the end there isn't any way for them to stop it i think these governments are slowly going to start to realize that they can't control it anymore but that's my they can i mean for china they they're communist party right so i think that they can probably uh they're always going to make it seem like they could control it and they're and they're in the eyes of their people they're going to make it super hard for them to be able to get it um, but those guys, like, they're just adding li- more liquidity to their pool because they already said, hey, look, you guys are going to have to use this digital you on. And then now your NFTs can only be worth value if they're backed by the digital you on or their fiat currency in a sense. So it kind of looks like you're just kind of stacking their numbers for for building up their uh, th- their liquidity pool, you know, like uh, for that digital you on. So. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how it works out there, but it's definitely so it's a that's a that's a crazy topic. But before we get out of here today, guys, uh, we're going to jump over to trade and view, kind of see what's going on in the total uh, crypto market. As far as the market cap uh, today, we're sitting at two point oh two trillion dollars. Uh, looks like we're kind of falling down a little bit here. Uh, uh, and we're down two point seven three percent on the day. Um, and the Ethereum dominance is at 19.17, so it's still pretty low. And the Bitcoin dominance is actually at 39.91. So both of these are really low. Doesn't look like any volumes uh, 
but a little volume came in over, over the weekend or the last couple of days, I think. Um, but, you know, like we're not getting any true volume in yet. So I just keep paying attention. If I were you guys uh, keep on doing your research, it's a lot of great projects out there uh, that's offering a lot of mining and farming. Uh, and, yeah. and those are those are really good things to do if you don't if you feel like trading isn't a good thing right now. So uh, as always, guys, we appreciate you tuning in with us. And until tomorrow, we will see you guys the next time. Yeah, have a wonderful day, you guys. We'll talk soon. Peace. Remember, we'll bring an article in the next couple of days on the AMM uh, liquidity. So keep an eye out for that. And we'll we'll go through an article. I think there might be one coming here soon that I can kind of explain it a little bit better. So looking forward to that. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful right, day. Yeah. Peace.